So do you want to take the hard out of HDR processing? It's kind of cool. It's been around for over a year, but I want to show you this little trick that Thomas O'Brien showed me. How many steps is it? It's about three clicks from Lightroom to Photoshop and back to Lightroom. What do you end up with after those three clicks? A 32-bit high dynamic range image, and you can process the file normally in Lightroom, and it looks great, and it's not unrealistic. You don't get those crazy highlights and shadows and high saturation. Um, that sounds good. Full control. So I did notice that when you take the exposure slider in Lightroom, you can move it all the way to the right 10 stops instead of five. That's correct. So that you gives you that huge latitude dynamic range to work with. 10 stops in each direction. Okay, within Lightroom in the library module, first thing you're going to do is select all the images in the exposure bracketed set. In this case, I'm going to use this scene of the cave. Second, you want to right click on one of the selected files and scroll down to merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Okay, when the image is opened inside the HDR Pro dialog box, first thing you want to do is come to, up to Mode up in the upper right hand corner and make sure you change it from 16-bit to 32-bit. Don't worry about what it looks like, just trust me. The other thing you want to make sure is not checked is complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw. You want to make sure that is unchecked. And last, if you want, you can click this Remove Ghosts and choose one of the files down here in the lower left-hand corner that could be utilized if part of the subject matter in your image is moving. And then click OK. The file is going to open up in Photoshop, but once again, don't pay attention to what it looks like. Simply go up to File and choose Save. After saving the file in Photoshop, you'll notice that the file is automatically imported back into Lightroom. So in the library module, choose the TIFF file that you just created and enter the develop module. Now this is the really cool part because unlike a 16-bit file, you'll notice first off if you go to the exposure slider, move that all the way to the left, you have 10 stops in both directions. So that's what we were talking about when we mentioned the large dynamic range. Because of this, you can make two moves that are going to do most to the image. You're going to bring the highlights down and you're going to move the shadows up. And I go a little bit further with the shadows so that then I can take the exposure for the whole file back down to something that I desire. Now that's pretty amazing that within three slider moves I have most of the work done on this file. I might add a little bit of vibrance to bring the color out and change the color hue or tint, that is, a little more red, and I might add just a tiny bit of contrast. So that's a pretty cool way to process HDR images. But wait, there's more. Since that time, I talked to Thomas. HDR Soft has come out with their own $29 version that does the same thing with fewer clicks. Check this out. Okay, back in Lightroom, you select the same files that we started with earlier and right click. And this time, instead of Edit In, you come all the way down to Export. And here's where you're going to find your plugin Merge to 32 bit HDR. Choose that. Up comes your one and only dialog box. This is how I have the default set up. Align images, crop align results by matching features, include perspective correction, and then I remove ghosts, and deghosting strength will vary with certain scenes. The last thing I check is stack with selected photo. That makes it very handy to find back in Lightroom. Hit merge, and away you go. Now the cool thing is you don't have to sit around and wait because it's going to combine all the image files and save it and import it back into Lightroom without any other clicks. The file on the left is made by HDR Soft and the one on the right was made by Photoshop. If we click on a particular part of the file you can see that both files are extremely clean. They're slightly different in certain areas and that's because of the way they're probably tone mapping but remember they're both 32 bits. You can derive any result you want or more results with this amount of bit depth than I've ever seen in post-processing. So have fun!